Hey, Doc Rob here, and today we're going to give you another installment in learning about the mushrooms. My topic today is the mushroom called turkey tail. And of all the mushrooms, turkey tail probably has had some of the most significance for pet owners, especially pet owners whose pets suffer from cancer, um, because there have been some studies in dogs with turkey tail, dogs that have hemangiosarcoma, and the extract of turkey tail that they used looked to be pretty successful with the first study. Second study, not so successful. But that doesn't mean that turkey tail as a mushroom is not something worthwhile thinking about if you get that terrible news of that diagnosis for your pet that it may have cancer. So let me start with some basic information. This is, um, this is what that little mushroom looks like. It's beautiful when it's alive and it's on the tree. They call it turkey tail because if you can see these little rings in the mushroom, they're really very nicely colored with greens and yellows and nice shades. It looks like the tail of a turkey. That's how it got its name. It's also called Tramides versicolor or Coriolis versicolor or other names for it. And we've got several other specimens here. Maybe you can see the those rings just a little better there, isn't that nice? And um, and here we have another specimen. And so historically, over hundreds and hundreds of years, um, native peoples, people that are that are, that live in areas where they can harvest turkey tail mushroom wild and use it for their own health, have looked to turkey tail when they get serious infections or when they get cancer. And by and large. The studies that we have and the reports about its effectiveness are pretty good. Maybe not for all cancers, and maybe you have to catch the cancer earlier in its course in order for it to be most effective. So we have turkey tail available as a standardized extract, which is quite potent in either a dried powder format, such as we have here with our pouches. And Turkey tail's a little bitter, a little bitter or sour, but many dogs will still take it. You know, some dogs really have no taste. You know, when it comes to eating their food, put something in it, they don't care. So if your dog is one of those, these pouches can be very cost effective for you to use because you just put some in the pouch. Now, we don't have any label information for pets on that pouch because it's designed for human use, but I've developed some some administration guidelines for you with turkey tail and we have those guidelines on each of these bottles. We also have turkey tail in capsules. Each capsule contains 300 milligrams of turkey tail and this would be especially for those pets who can't handle the powder in their food. It gets it into them nonetheless. And um, the dosing recommendations that I have on the bottle would be a capsule for each 20 to 40 pounds of body weight daily. But you can increase that substantially. And I really think higher doses, higher amounts for pets who have cancer are essential. So I would go with, you know, um, a capsule per 10 or 20 pounds of body weight. And instead of giving it once daily, I'd give it twice daily. Just wanting, it's very, very safe. Studies have shown to be very safe. We just want to make sure we get enough dosage in there. Well, and then we have the mushroom immune chews which have turkey tail in them as part of the five defenders, but it also has chaga, which has been known for its ability to deal with cancer, and rishi, which also is known for its ability to deal with cancer, and maitake and shiitake both. So this is also a really good formula to use, although it's in those soft chews, and so you're limited by the amount of dose for a given soft chew, so you might have to give multiple ones in order to achieve an effective dose for your pet. So um, that's it for today. That's our turkey tail lecture. Now consider yourselves informed. Have a great day, great weekend, Labor Day weekend. Enjoy yourself. Take some time off and relax. Bye.